And now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One, shooting through space. Countdown! All systems are going, Outer Scope One, Ten. and now for the countdown. Nine. Oh, boy! Eight! Seven! Six! What a game! Five! Four! We're almost up! Three! Two! We're almost up! One! You get that door closed, Henry. I'll help Willie. <clears throat> Cynthia, shut off that fuel system. We're flying, for heaven's sake. <clears throat> oh, no. Where's Henry? What do you mean? Help! Henry! Hold on, little fella. We'll pull you in. Willie, help! Grab my hand, Eleanor. We'll make a change. Okay, Cynthia, hold on to Edgar. Oh, poor Henry. Okay, pull. <laughs> pull. 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 It's okay, Henry. You'll be safe in a minute. Pull. 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 What happened? It's as if we stopped so peaceful. Henry, your elbow is in my stomach. Sorry, Edgar. What happened? Where are we? Here, Henry. Fix your glasses so you can see. There now, you're safe. We're all safe. Oh, I don't know about that. Look out the window. It's Earth, Henry. You mean... we're in outer space? Really? Gosh. I didn't know yeast could do that. Looks like we've invented a rocket engine and didn't even know it. Well, I hope it keeps working. I wouldn't want to fall from up here. Oh, wow, what's that? Good heavens, it's the moon. Not only the moon, Cynthia, but the dark side of the moon. And that means we're headed away from Earth. like we've fallen into a different universe. Well, it sure is a beautiful one.
crash into something. I can't. It's too late. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. To be continued. Next time, Crash Landing. Hi, my name is Angel Cordero. I'm a professional jockey. When I became interested in horses, I must be about three years old, as far as I remember. My father and my grandfather and all my parents, and my father and my mother part, they was involved in racing. So I've been living with horses and interested in horses when I was a little kid. <laughs> I believe you have to love horses to become a good rider, because more you love what you're doing, better job you do. Well, all my life I've been in love with racing, and I love to be a jackie as long as I can ride. And if I ever have to quit, that the time will come, I would like to be a trainer or owner. It requires a lot of hard work. You gotta work in the morning, you gotta work in the afternoon, and sometimes you have to work at night. Me? Yeah! Well, in order to be a good jockey, I guess it takes a lot of determination and a lot of hard work, and you just try to get as fast as you can get on your profession. But to become a good jockey, I will advise a young girl or a young guy. That he has to keep his way down, and. Uh, he have to really be interested on being a jockey and put his maximum on, onto it. The greatest moment in my career, I have to say, was winning the 100 Kentucky Derby last year. I think that's the greatest thing that could happen to any jockey in the world. Yeah, you have to go to school when you uh, start to be a jockey. Uh, we call in school going in the stable area and work with the horses and learn everything about racing before you ever come a jockey. Well, the size is very important to become a good rider because you will get down on a horse much better than a tall guy. You have to get real low on a horse to cut the wind when he's running. And as low as you can get on a horse, the faster he can run. Well, the color of the jackets were bring by the owners. Every owner have his different colors. And depending on for what owner you ride in a race, that depending on the color you wear in a race. We as Jackie compete with each other every day, but uh, we get along pretty good after the race is over. It is not discrimination in racing, I don't believe so. I, I believe we have Jackie from all over the country, from France, uh, England, uh, Puerto Rico, Panama, Mexico. All, 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 all kind of countries, and uh, we get along good. And I believe as long as you got the ability, it is not any discrimination against riders. It's just whatever you can do on the horse. That's what it counts. Yeah! I usually talk to horses. I sing to them to relax them and talk to them when you want them to slow down and scream at them when you want them to go faster. But when a jackie fell off a horse, and if the horse came first, he's not entitled to the winner. He's automatically disqualified because he's supposed to come to the wire with the jackie. The only way you can win a race is uh, finish with the horse. As long as you're on top of the horse, even if you fell after the wire, then you win it, but you have to go by the wire with the horse. I guess God is with the jackies. Uh, we don't get hurt that many times. But when you win a race, you feel happier than when you lose because you got the owner and the trainer happy and the, pu and the public that bet on the horse. So I believe everybody likes to win. Beautiful. Right. boy. Thank you. Okay.
Bum ba da bum bum ba. My name is Julia Scissor. And my name is Rubberhead. I can cut a piece of paper. I can draw on it with lead. I'm happy when I'm sappy. I'm fine for any line. If you learn the way to use it, you can have a real good time. Rub a dub dub. Shh. 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 We're making a surprise party for the ruler. So don't let him inch up on us. What's that? That rubber head is a pinata. A pinata? A toy filled with candy and presents. It's popular in the Southwest, where many Mexican Americans live. What do they do with it? At Christmas and Easter, they hit it with a stick. All the goodies fall out. It's just the thing to have at our party. We'll have a fiesta. That's Spanish, Julia, the language of 14 million Americans. It means party or festival. Let's make a piñata. The first thing to make is paper mache. How do we do that? I'll show you the way. Rip strips of paper. Newspapers will do. Flour and water make a good glue. Drop in the strips, and with a little luck, maybe you can get my arms unstuck. Sorry, Rubberhead. Blow up two balloons, one big and one small. Tie up the ends. When you need me, call. Okay, Julia. Very soon. First, we've got to cover each balloon with a couple of layers. Don't be nervous. Ready, Julia? At your service. Cut a strip of paper. Shape it like a fan. Can you glue it in place? You bet I can. This feels hard already. Have two hours passed? When you're having fun, time goes so fast. Now carefully cut a hole in the top. Don't be frightened, Julia. I expect a pop. Take lots of candy. Fill it up to here. That sounds terrific. What a sweet idea! Take the other balloon. Glue it into place. Okay, magic markers. Time to make a face. Rubberhead, Julie, do your stuff. I think we're finished. That's enough. What a pinata! That's a lot of pinata. Hey, where you guys been? I've been looking all over. What's this? A pinata? Isn't it slick? According to custom, you must hit it with a stick. What? Hit it with a stick? Feliz cumpleaños, Sati. Feliz cumpleaños, Sati. Feliz cumpleaños, dear ruler. Feliz cumpleaños, Sati. Real people, I'd like to introduce you to some real. My name is Martin, and Nigel is my pet snake. I worry about him getting sick. Have you ever tried to find a snake doctor? Ah! What's the matter? What happened? Look at that. What is that? What does it look like? It's mice, frozen mice. What? For Nigel. Oh, Martin, for heaven's sake. I'm sorry, Mom. I forgot to tell you when I put them in the freezer. Scott couldn't keep them for me this week. I always liked them. Yeah, what about me? I almost had a heart attack. Well, Nigel's been acting kind of strange lately. He's been hiding in dark corners, not really wanting me to touch him. That's all we need. Mice in the freezer and a sick snake upstairs. I just may run away from home and you guys can fix your own dinner. Look at his eyes. They look kind of strange, like a film. Sylvan. Yes, they do look strange. Do you think he's going blind? I don't know, Martin. Well, you're a doctor. Don't you know what's wrong with him? Well, Martin, a uh, snake probably has sicknesses that a people doctor like me knows absolutely nothing about. Look, it's too late to do anything for him tonight. Uh, if he doesn't look better tomorrow, perhaps we'd better take him to a vet, OK? All right, and maybe I'd better call Scott, too. <laughs> Yes, and maybe you should call Scott, too. Hey, you! You 
got some nerve. First you break the window. Then you come in here to watch me repair it. That's it, right? I didn't break any window. Don't lie to me. I seen you. It was, it was one of you two guys anyway. How did you get in here anyhow? Right through the door downstairs. Don't get snotty with me. Oh, I ought to call the cops. Kids. This is the kid that broke the window. These kids today, the nerve. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now he waltzes oh. in here all high and mighty. I can't trust any of them. I didn't break any window. I just got here. What makes you think it was me? I seen you. And you better have a good reason for being here because I am going to call a cop. Hey, I'm the reason he's here. What's this all about, man? Now, that's all I need. You sticking up for him. He just broke this window. And he threw a rock from the backyard. Hey, this is my friend Martin Harris. He's a very good friend of mine. He comes here often, and I'm sure you've seen him before. I wouldn't want you to be embarrassed in front of all your friends in the police station by accusing the wrong person. Yeah, but he, he, he looks like the, the, the kid that threw the rock. Well, we can't help that, can we? You just better make sure your facts. Just better be cool. Let's go. Have a soda and take it easy, will you? Just calm down. I bet you he wouldn't have talked like that to me if I'd been white. No, you wouldn't have even looked like the kid that threw the rock, either. Yeah. Look, Martin, look. There's no sense in getting upset over a person like that. But he just took one look at me and started yelling. He had nothing better to do but yell. He didn't even look at you. All he saw was a black kid. That's yeah, all. but do I have to answer for all the black kids in the world? No, you shouldn't have to. But there's always some guy out there that thinks that all blacks cause trouble. Just like all snakes bite. It's easier than using your brain. Yeah, I felt like just going up there and punching him right in the face. Yeah, and then you wouldn't be using your brain. And you've got a pretty good one. Look, you have to feel sorry for a person like that. I mean, he hasn't had a new idea in 30 years. I mean, forget it, Martin. You're way ahead of it. Yeah, but it's all so unfair. Yes, it's unfair. It's very unfair. And it has to be dealt with. But it has to be dealt with intelligently. Just like I have to deal with the fact that you haven't told me why you've come here. Oh, I forgot. I've been worried about Nigel. He's been acting funny. He's nervous, cranky. He's hiding in dark corners. And then his eyes. Kind of clouded over? With, like, like a film over him? Yeah, how did you know? Don't worry about it, man. Like, he's getting ready to shed. And there's no problem. Just leave him alone until he sheds, and everything will be fine. He's hiding in corners, and he's hiding too slow. His eyes look funny, and I just don't know. Should we give him a pill to make him move quicker? No medicine in any form only makes you sicker. <sighs> John, before you go inside, there's something I have to tell you that I don't want Martin to know about. Well, well, keeping secrets from Martin now, huh? But this is something that'll upset him terribly. It's about Nigel. He's dead. Dead? Yes, I found him in the sunroom among the flowers all dried out. Let's don't tell Martin right away. Well, maybe we could get him another boy, replace him. John, does it have to be a snake this time? Couldn't we get him a different kind of pet? Maybe after a while, Martin would forget about Nigel. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Come on, let's go on inside. Come on, see? Hey, look. Mom, Dad, I found Nigel. Ta-da! Nigel, Nigel. What are you guys staring at? Impossible. What do you mean, impossible? Nigel has brand new skin. Martin, is that another boy? Another boy? What? Martin, I didn't want to tell you this, but I found Nigel in here. He's dead. <laughs> oh, oh, Mom, you're silly. That's only your skin. Isn't she silly, Dad? <laughs> Actually, I think she's kind of cute. Are you going to get mushy? I'm not going to hang around for this. Come on, Nigel, let's get out of here. Hi, this is Woody. How are you? Are 
should I say, como estas, like the Spanish do. For today, we're making a Mexican treat called guacamole. It can't be beat. Mexican-Americans throughout the state love guacamole. They think it's great. And so it is, as you'll soon see. So get in your gear and follow me. Two avocados, two avocados here, and one tomato, one tomato. My dear, I can hardly wait to have a taste of that delicioso avocado taste. We'll need two green chili peppers. That's true, but if you can't get fresh ones, canned ones will do. And it's a good idea to have a grown-up along just to make sure that things do not go wrong. Now, first you have to peel the avocado, then mash them up along with the tomato. Then chop up the roasted chili peppers, add a little salt, and mix up all the goodies together. Now what you got is a fabulous dish to serve with corn or potato chips. Mm. 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 And when you have passed the guacamole around, you'll be so surprised at all the friends you found. For everyone loves a new taste treat, whether they're from Mexico or 18th Street. Another nice thing about avocados is the wonderful thing you can do with the pit. Just place it in water, then put it in the dark, and after some days, you'll see it start to grow. Then take the pit, plant it in a pot, and what do you think that you have got? The beginning of what will turn out to be a great and noble avocado tree. Make some guacamole, then plant a tree. <laughs> Flowers are different colors. Birds are different colors. But are people different colors? Well, here are some colors. Red, green, purple, orange, yellow. Do people come in all of these colors? Yes. No. Seems to be some confusion here. Well, let's see. This is Kathy. Her parents are American Indians, members of a group that was once thought to have red skin. But is her skin really red? No. This is David. His great-grandparents were born in China. Some say Asian people have yellow skin. But is David's skin really yellow? No. And this is Tracy. Her parents are Afro-American. She is a black, but her color is dark brown. Are we different colors, or are we really different shades of the same color? We don't, we don't know. know. OK. Now, if your skin has ever peeled after a bad scrape or burn, you know that the top layers have practically no color at all. But spread about in the lower layers of everybody's skin are tiny grains of dark brown coloring material called melanin. Melanin means dark or black. Melanin is the name of a dark brown coloring material in everyone's skin. Pretend for a minute that this coffee is like the melanin in your skin. When looked at from a distance, the tiny grains of brown melanin appear to make skin an even brown or tan color. If you have only scattered grains of melanin, your skin looks very light. A medium amount of melanin makes a medium brown skin tone. And if you have a lot of melanin, your skin is very dark brown. And all the shades in between are made up the same way. But why does some people's skin look pink? OK, yes. There are some other things that affect skin color. And they are shared by dark and light-skinned people alike. First, have you ever noticed that on your knuckles and under your fingernails and other places where your skin is stretched and thin, it looks pink? In the same way, people who have thin skin all over their body may have dark brown, tan or light skin with a pink or reddish tint. And of course, skin can change color in the sun, turn red when you blush, or turn pale when you're sick, 
But these changes don't last. And none of these has as much to do with skin color as melanin. Melanin is the most important coloring material, and people in every part of the world have it. So do people come in all different colors? No. No. They come in different shades of the same color. And more than that, all people have the same kind of brain and heart and eyes. We can all love and laugh. And because of that, we are very special indeed. Francis, because of the energy crisis, school may be closed tomorrow. I'll be tickled pink, wouldn't you? Tickle, yes. Pink, no. Bow, bow, the bow. 